a very warm welcome to Colpin on this Monday of Holy Week. The order is that based on the one devised for Ripon College Custom and follows uh, the order through. We will be singing the office, including the office hymn. The one deviation will be that the uh, reading appointed for today, um, tonight, will not be the one, any of the ones in the liturgy, but will be one chosen by Father Dan. Would you please stand? So with me vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. And speed to the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. We confess to God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Before the whole company of heaven, that, that we have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, through our fault, our own fault, our own most grievous fault. Therefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to our lasting time. The Almighty and most merciful God, grant unto you pardon absolution and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of St. John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse, and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it, so that she might, might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with me, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also, also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the, so the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. As we are now almost at the end of Holy Monday, the second day of Holy Week, the mood is a solemn one. In today's Gospel, we are told of how Mary takes costly perfume and anoints Jesus. This isn't just about putting some nice aftershave on him to make him smell nice before the festival of the Passover. Rather, Everyone in the room at the time would have recognised what was going on, even if they were confused by it. Anointing a body with costly perfumes was a Jewish practice observed for burying the dead. This simple action is nevertheless rich in the symbolism of death. It is also an action which points towards Christ's own death. And that is what we'll be doing here, in church, until Good Friday, pointing towards Jesus' death. But I want to dwell a little more tonight on Mary's act of anointing Jesus. The act of anointing someone, where we take a precious substance, such as nard or olive oil, can mean a multiplicity of things. The anointing of Jesus clearly points to his death, but it's also a confirmation of his calling from God. By the time we get to Jesus' visit to Jerusalem in the Gospels, God is calling him to follow an imminent vocation of death. Jesus is anointed by Mary with precious ointments, because his vocation towards the cross is being confirmed. The church today goes about anointing people on a fairly regular basis. In fact, Father David and I will be going up to Southwark Cathedral on Thursday to collect the three holy oils which we need to carry out our sacramental and pastoral ministries here oils with which we anoint people at various points in our lives. We will collect the oil of catechumens, the oil used to anoint someone before they're baptised. We will also collect the oil of chrism, used for various scenarios, but usually for sacraments such as confirmation, where being anointed with the oil of chrism is a core part of the confirmation service or in fact in the ordination of priests. 
Then there will be the oil of sick, used to anoint those in bad health, those who need spiritual healing, and also those in the process of dying. Like the anointing of Jesus, all these oils in use in today's church point to something. New life in baptism, or healing or closure in sickness or in death. However, just like Jesus' anointing, they call us to something. Anointing both points to or confirms a calling. When baptismal candidates are anointed, they are called in a very profound way to live out their baptismal vows. Of course, most callings in our lives will not be recognised officially by anointing, like Jesus' calling to take up the cross was recognised when Mary anointed him. We all have various callings from God in our lives, such as being called to be good members of our families, households or communities, callings for our careers, callings to, callings to do something specific in any given circumstance, such as to give up your seat for someone on the bus. And this points us to another facet of today's Gospel. Jesus knew what God was calling him to do in that specific situation that night, and he accepted that call. Whether we know it or not, God will be calling each one of us to something right here, right now. I wonder what it is. As we are, as we are at the start of Holy Week, I wonder if there are any signs which have been pointing towards God's call for you in your life. Just as we all have a calling today, I also think we all have a little bit of the Judas in us, which we hear about later in today's Gospel. We can hear callings and sometimes say, Nah, this won't work because of ABC. It'll be too expensive, it'll be too costly, etc, etc. But one of the things which is truly inspirational about the figure of Christ is his devotion to his calling. But at the same time, Christ's calling is not a fanciful or a dreamlike one. Christ follows a calling which costs him dearly, even his very life. He doesn't follow a calling which tickles his own image of himself or makes him feel better. He follows a calling which leads directly to the cross. We are now on that journey with him. We need to be realistic about our own callings, but before that, we need to be aware of the calls in our lives in the first place. If you journey with us throughout Holy Week, attending our various masses and services here, our hope and prayer is that you will experience all kinds of thoughts and emotions. And I hope that in the midst of all those emotions, you will be able to try to find a space to think about what God might be calling you to do in your life right now. Whether that calling is to visit your grandma more often, say your prayers every night, to move house, you are now being called to something whether you know it or not, and you're being called this night. Amen. Sponsoring top of
page eight. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Is thou Lord only that 
that makest us dwell in safety. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord God has and gave us his blessing. Amen. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. 